So hi everybody, I'm going to talk about uh, FFDN, which is a federation of ISPs in France. And we have in common that we are all do-it-yourself ISPs. Um, we are mostly in France, but also in Belgium. And we'd actually like to have the concept expand to other places in Europe, for instance. All right. So uh, that's the map of uh, our census for ISPs. Blue being ISPs that we have running in France. Uh, orange are other um, groups that we know that are not necessarily uh, ISPs or are not necessarily currently running. As you can see, there are quite a few uh, ISPs uh, which are running that way. Actually, there's also a few others in, um, in more remote places, but I can't show them uh, uh, properly on the map. Um, so, um, in total, counting do-it-yourself ISPs and not non-do-it-yourself ISPs, there are 1,800 ISPs in France, and we are only a tiny fraction of it. And if we count by subscribers count, we are even tinier. But um, what we have in, uh, what is special about us is that we make sure that we are we stay at a scale that is human. We try to have a link between our members that everyone knows pretty much each other and can actually influence the how the ISP runs and how the organization runs. Currently, so we have uh, more than 2,000 uh, members and uh, more than half, uh, it's roughly 61%, are subscribers. That also means that these people rely on us for the internet access and actually rely on themselves too. The reason we have decided to split between uh, so many ASPs, so currently 30, we are renewing uh, maybe 40, is that uh, there is one old ISP in France. Uh, it's been running for 25 years. It's called FDN. And roughly a decade ago, they realized that there were so many people, they couldn't know each other pretty, they couldn't know each other well enough. So they decided to split between many smaller ISPs Something like, um, well, let's say, uh, whenever possible, whenever there was a city big enough for people to start something, or a region where people would be interested in doing something, um, they would be helped in starting uh, that project. And that way we have structures that are smaller and that each of them can keep that human scale and it's much more simple to get involved uh, that way for everyone. So we can have new newcomers that, want, that don't have to know everything. Uh, they don't have to know 20 years of history or the, all the technical details of one running ISP, which uh, handles 2,000 customers. And that way, we're not simply customers, but also members of the association. So I'm going to go more into details about uh, what the Federation does on human aspects, on technical topics, so how we... Because the Federation itself is not an ASP. It's a Federation of ASP which does not that much about technical things. Um, we will also see how we manage uh, contact with the state administration at the federation level and a few things about what we do with law, how we study it, analyze it, and try to help uh, the ISPs. So, uh, first point in making a new ISP is to get people to meet each other. And with the federation, we have a pretty good, um, well, we, people tend to know us. They know that if they want to start an ISP, 
uh, a local one, they can simply ask us and we'll try to get them the right contact. If we know that someone lives in the proper place or that someone was, uh, someone was interested in, in doing something and we will tell each other to contact them, to get in touch. Um, we also give the standard advice that uh, it's not that simple and they need uh, several people to actually start the ISP, to, do, to start a project. They, they, they can't be alone in doing that. And that's at least something in France. In order to become an ISP, you need to do a bit of paperwork. It's like only one, uh, I don't know exactly, but it's one, maybe two pages, uh, it's very simple. But people tend to get scared about it very easily. So we tell them, no, no, be assured, it's going to be simple. You don't have to worry about that. And don't worry uh, about hardware either. We're going to help with that. Um, usually, it takes a few weeks, few months, because before people actually start something and ask us uh, again about um, how they should proceed. So we simply wait and maybe after one year we'll get into touch ourselves again. But usually before that we they get back and we learn uh, about the project and how it's going on and so on. Now about technical topics, uh, as I said we the federation itself is not an, it's not an ISP. It's not running uh, hardware by itself. It's not running services uh, except a few things that the, that we need to, like a wiki, things like that, but no internet access. Um, where we help is really we tell people, yeah, we need, um, if you need hardware, you, we can probably uh, find something for you. If you need uh, IPv4 addresses, we can probably find someone that can lend, uh, lend you IPv4 addresses and so on. We also help them decide what they need, what is going to best help them for internet access with um, technologies. Because quite often we have people who come like, oh, I want to do uh, DSL. And uh, yeah, but radio is probably going to be better for you. And that's where we help and we tell them, yeah, we can do like 10 kilometers, 100 megabits, we can do it. Um, there are a few if, but usually we can do it. Or you can do it with them. Um, yeah, as I said, we tend to learn things to start the ISP because we don't want people to get drawn into uh, details, we think. We think the f most important part is getting uh, the organization set up to get uh, things running at a human level and hardware can be replaced. Um, humans, it's not, it, it not the same kind. Um, you will have new members, but it's always a loss when some, someone leaves. And IPv4 addresses, they are more and more annoying to get, but we still have some spare prefixes which we can use and which we can learn. So uh, about uh, where specifically we help for um, different kind of accesses. So DSL, we obviously cannot pull cables ourselves. We can do that, it's way too expensive. So instead what we do now uh, is simply that we have access to wholesale from uh, larger ISPs. And uh, we get Bitstream for custom for from subscribers, sorry. And that way we can do whatever we want with the traffic, which is give uh, IPs as we wish, uh, avoid, uh, let's say, um, throttling uh, depending on websites, uh, make sure that we abide by net neutrality and so on. Um, but since we have uh, pretty, well, there are some fixed costs. Like for instance, uh, for one uh, telco, we have 200 um, uh, euros per month uh, for zero line. And obviously, if we have less than 50 subscribers, it's not going to work out. So what we do at the federation level is make sure that, uh, well, is help 
ISPs communicate and share uh, between them. Um, typically, one is going to take the to sign the contract and is going to resell uh, lines to others. And that way, we can be uh, a couple of hundreds on the lines, and the two hundred are quite small and not an issue. We don't end up much more expensive than big telcos. We do end up more expensive, but uh, hopefully not too much. Uh, yeah, dial-up, I'm mentioning it because we do have that in FDN. Um, oops, sorry, it's my fault. We do have that in FDN, but uh, obviously no one gets new lines that way. But it has been useful be uh, to provide internet access in Syria a few years ago. Uh, it was simply yeah, dial uh, FDN in France and get internet access that way. Slow, but it works. Right, uh, radio is something we have been more involved in uh, in, in the past few years. In France, we have, if you don't know the geography of France, it's basically, the, well, at least from a people perspective, it's Paris. Then you have a few other cities, and in between, there's pretty much nothing. So these places tend to have really poor internet access. Uh, I think if you go even 30, 40 kilometers away from Paris, and want to have DSL, you'll have less than one megabit per second, or nothing. So you might be really unlucky, and radio helps us bridge that gap. Um, we tend to advise it to people who start ISPs in um, places a bit f f not in cities, and who want. Um, yeah, we have members who don't really like cities, and that really helps with the connectivity. We try to share experience. We, I, I'm sure we have, we have really a lot to learn from Firefunk and from Giphy and again others. But we do have a bit of experience and radio links. And we can at least um, explain to people if they're going to manage to get the links that they want. And uh, more often than, than not, it's doable and we push people to do radio because it's going to be like 100 euros uh, hardware uh, to begin with and then pretty much nothing. And last is FTTH, so fiber. And fiber is pretty much the same as DSL uh, from 15 years ago. It's that we can't use it in France. And we, don't, we can't have a wholesale for it. And so we are stuck, and I'll explain a bit soon what we are doing to solve that. All right. Uh, yeah. So it involves a bit of talking with the states, and we do some, uh, let's say, lobbying um, related to radio bands in order to make sure that we keep some for the people. We also do try to get FTTH Bitstream, which would allow us to actually provide uh, subscriptions for our fiber. And we also invest, well, our time, we spend our time trying to, well, some of the time, trying to avoid having to log what uh, our subscribers do, because the laws in France currently um, try to force you to keep um, an IP address and name uh, match for um, for one year, which is pretty huge, and the EU disagrees with it. But still, in France, it's what it's done. So before talking about, about the lower space, a bit of regulation, tiny bit, I promise. So our regulator is the RCEP and they work together in the, uh, in the BWEC and we have pretty good ties, uh, well, ties maybe not, but we tend to exchange with them on a, a fairly regular basis and we can say that we are, ASAP listens to us. We are basically no bullshit, we answer, we provide a non, when we answer their consultation, when they ask something and we answer, we don't give the same answers as the largest telcos. 
we have a different point of view, we have different needs, and that's something they actually want. They want different answers. They don't want the same bullshit that they get uh, all of the time from large telcos. Um, so they are really happy to get uh, such feedback. And yeah, just to give an example, one public consultation that uh, we have currently running, actually uh, it's due uh, before mid-January, I think, and I haven't started yet, um, is uh, user equipment, because um, they have telcos that say that the user shouldn't be able to choose their own equipment or terminal. They shouldn't be able to change hardware, um, sorry, software. And law, the, the law actually says they have to. Users have to be free. It's a e EU law. They have to be free to choose their equipment. But the RCEP doesn't know what that means. They need us to... And they, they also ask other telcos for details about what that entails, uh, what should be done, how to do it, and so on. And we are hopeful that we are going to get properly heard for, the, for that. Uh, as I said, we also do stuff on the EU level. Um, since we are a federation of ASP and not more, when there's something which is closer to what La Quadrature Unit does, we tend to uh, either shift it to La Quadrature or work with La Quadrature. Um, we have uh, the same for the groups of people. Uh, we try to stay pretty much focused. And when we have to do something like um, consultations or the like, uh, we want it to, we, we do it for topics that are really for ISPs. And yeah, I just had mentioned that I'm not able to understand all the steps of the legislative process of the EU. Uh, I simply cannot. So what I tend to do is I, I hope that someone from the Lacordature is going to guide me and to make sure I don't say the wrong thing to the wrong people. Uh, so far that has worked well enough and I hope it's going to continue but should be good. Um, yeah, right. So legal actions. Uh, as I said in France right now, uh, the law says we have to keep uh, match for one year between uh, IP addresses and uh, usernames. Actually, well, we have to be able to identify someone for one year. Mm, and that's a lot. Uh, the EU Court of Justice says it's too much. Uh, France says, uh, no, the EU Court of Justice uh, mentioned that for another case on uh, what we do. And uh, legal actions help, um, how should I put it? Um, they force the government and the law to evolve. They force, they force them to adapt to what is actually uh, asked. If no one goes to court, it's going to stay the same. And we might do the same for FTTH because uh, currently we have monopolies. Uh, even the EU agrees that uh, the situation is in France for fiber is a monopoly, pretty much. And um, swing is again a way to make things move forward. And almost the end. Uh, something we do also at the federation level is simply, simply, uh, well, is to read the law, try to understand it, try to um, express it in terms of what is actually needed um, on a technical point of view. Um, if you need to change the, the such and such configuration, if you need to make sure that your logs uh, don't contain such uh, lines, um, that's something we are currently working on. It's fairly difficult, but we also have a lot of people who ask us about it. Um, takes us time to do it because the topic is huge and the law is contradictory. And it's been written with uh, phones in mind, not internet. But we managed to move forward and there's really someone asking us about where the, what the status is of our uh, conclusions every couple months at most.
Um, yeah, one last thing we would do at um, the Federation level is that if we have a law that seems completely too much, it seems too restrictive, too, um, too bad simply, we can use the Federation to say no, we don't want to do it. We, we think that thing is bad, maybe other IS, uh, ISPs do it, but we think it's bad. Uh, we, we won't do it and we will resist uh, doing it. So what's what? Uh, yeah, what's next? Um, we have uh, we are really growing actually quite fast currently. Uh, we've gained uh, in the federation, I think, three ISPs during the uh, the year, three four ISPs maybe. And I'm not counting uh, members, uh, maybe a few hundreds. So at least seems to be quite a lot. Um, but we also have new issues to deal with. For instance, a few weeks ago, one of our uh, ISP member had um, its um, IP provider change. And they said, no, we're not going to give you IP4 addresses anymore, at least not at that rate. You're going to have to pay, I don't know, three, four times as much as before. And that's a real issue for building an ISP now. It's popping up. We also have in France uh, surveillance laws. They have, uh, th there was a talk uh, for, uh, um, by La Codature uh, earlier today. Uh, you can catch up with it. Uh, it should, it's not streamed anymore, obviously, but uh, Media Kit should be up soon. And it, g it gives a list of uh, everything that has been um, done in the past few years, from laws to statements of high-level politics about uh, how to break anonymity, um, privacy, and so on. Um, but currently, we have pretty good success about it. We do manage uh, to win against uh, the largest telcos, which are uh, multi-billion companies. So it's pretty good. We also have won things about, uh, against the states, again. Uh, and in a similar fashion, there was, um, for ESP, there was a Tele2, uh, tele um, ah, sorry. There was Tele2 um, decision, which restricts uh, how long we have to keep logs on the users. Um, yeah, and we would like to see uh, and to get involved more with people who do that at a European level. We'd like more collaboration with others. Um, we know there's Edwi, there's even La Quadratio, which is known at the European level, there's a FSFE for a lot of topics. But we haven't seen that for ISPs, and we would really love that it uh, grows. So we can have um, more like, hey, I want to make a new ISP, and I need uh, where your links from that place to that place. Has someone tried? Can someone help me about that? And we would really love to see that at a European scale, because we do have that in France uh, currently. Oh, yeah, right. So, uh, thanks uh, LibreOffice, which has eaten my contact infos. So, here you go. Right. No. <coughs> Just give me a second, because it's going to be easier if I can type it. Great. So, uh, contact at ffdn.org is our main uh, way to reach the Federation. Uh, we have a few people we try to answer quickly. Sometimes we need a few days, but usually it's fine. Um, the map I've shown at the beginning, like, which has the database of ISPs, is db.ffdn.org. Um, the, the, um, actually, the code is open source. Uh, it's not very well groomed, but it's improving quickly now. And we can add other points, we can add more data to it. It's simply a JSON uh, file to update. Uh, I mean, each ISP publishes a JSON, vi JSON file and we put it for DB. If you want to reach me at Congress, you can simply use that. IRC or XMPP. XMPP is going to work better at Congress. 
um, because I'm not always on IEC. And GSM doesn't work now. Delta, I haven't registered, so forget it for now. And that's simply the talk from the exaggerated amateur who are, uh, let's say, the um, people who like to sue the government. Uh, they seem to do that for breakfast, I don't know why, uh, but it works well. They're giving a talk on, in two days. Uh, if you want, uh, check it out. It's as they say, uh, let's take uh, states to the court and make things improve. Um, it's simply making sure that laws are judged as sorry, not um, abiding by the constitution. It's what we have right now, but it seems lawmakers manage to do that very often. They, they, they manage to do bad laws on a very regular ba basis. So that's thing for today, I think. And if you have any question, uh, go on. Any question, any question. Um, and so um, you said uh, you consult uh, the new providers uh, in terms of uh, the um, uh, the legal requirements. Um, is there a high entry barrier uh, for this to implement these regulations for n new providers? So like a setup where you have some, uh, let's say, uh, some boxes which uh, conform to some standards and audits and where you have to uh, think, uh, uh, think about uh, 50,000 euro uh, setup fee for such a system in the beginning. Uh, there's no issue with that. If you want to set an ISP, it's only uh, uh, by I know a few dozen of euros at most for everything. Um, uh, the law simply says you have to do it. It doesn't say how you have to do it. Um, so no such issue. But uh, currently, we actually don't know how we should, how we are supposed to do it by the law. Uh, we are still small enough to fly under the water, so we don't have that issue. Uh, there's also another thing, uh, w because right now there are black boxes, black boxes on uh, um, French uh, subscriber lines, but we don't have the details, they are kept secret. So that kind of hardware which should be certified or whatever, or come from some specific source, and I wouldn't know who would pay it, it's probably currently deployed, but only on the larger ISPs. And also in a sense, since we are relying on the infrastructure, we don't know if, we, if the data of our subscribers goes through that. But that's a possibility, but we don't have the, the details.